taking responsibility for whatever happens to you, knowing that you have consciously made the decisions that are now affecting you, knowing that what is happening now, the direct result of your activity, what you did yesterday. Self-reliance is basically counting on yourself, trusting yourself, being confident with yourself, being responsible to yourself, trusting the conclusions that you have developed from your study of experiences and philosophies, learning from the mistakes that you have made, being self-reliant. They say that by deciding not to carry an umbrella every day, you have made the decision to endure an occasional drenching. Translation, by not being prepared, you make the choice of getting caught in some of life's unpleasant circumstances. Failures, economic losses, professional losses, personal losses. By not being prepared, it's your choice. By being prepared, you increase your chances of success of seizing opportunities when they come your way, of being ready within yourself to take advantage of once-in-a-lifetime situations. Some people tend to blame others for their mistakes. Now, you can't control what others around you do, but it's in your own best self-interest that you stay on top of things, especially if it's going to affect your future. Be responsible for the things that affect you. You can make sure you're more responsible by checking in with those people who are working with you. You can be more responsible by saying, Hey John, how are you doing with your part? Do you need some help? Now if John consistently doesn't handle his part, you've got to replace John. Or what? It will negatively affect you. You can't wake up in the morning hoping and wishing that John has done his part. You've got to be responsible because it's going to affect your career too. And I used to say something like, I sure hope things will change for the better. Then here's what I found out. They're not going to change. When you change, when you get better, it'll get better. Don't put it on someone else. Hope that someone else will change it for you. Take responsibility for yourself. You can't change the circumstances or the seasons or the wind, but you can change your reading habits. Burn the midnight oil, turn yourself around. That you've got charge of. That you have control of. And if you don't, that's your fault. You've got to take personal responsibility. You've got to be self-reliant. You, nobody else can change your life. Pave a golden road for you. But you can. It's up to you. Be responsible for yourself. Learn to reap the harvest without complaint. And here's where it comes from. Taking full responsibility. For everything you do, be responsible to yourself. Whatever your paycheck is, take full responsibility. You say, well, it's my employer. No, it's not your employer. You can become twice as valuable, three times as valuable doing everything in your power to stay on track. Whenever your preparations lead to success, you reinforce the disciplines that got you there. If what you're doing is working, keep doing it. If what you're doing isn't working, change it. When you are doing all that you can possibly do and are successful at reaching your expectations, keep doing it. Psychologists call this positive reinforcement. That's how we train our dogs. That's how we teach our kids. By positive reinforcement. When you bring a brand new puppy home and try to teach him not to mess in the house, what do you do? You reward him for going outside or scratching at the door. When you're trying to get your older kids to crack the books and study, what do you do? You reward them when they get good grades. You teach them that the skills they are developing now will have great positive effects on their lives later. This is positive reinforcement. Learning that there are rewards for doing something good. The greater the value, the greater the reward. The better you do, the better your reward. A bigger paycheck, a better house, it's all a reward system. Positive reinforcement builds good habits. 
If what you are doing are building your ambition and increasing your success, keep doing them. Your success is reaffirming that these habits are good, that you need to keep doing what you are doing. By reviewing these habits that bring on success, you reinforce them. Now here's the other side. By reviewing your habits, you may find out that some of them are inhibiting your success. You may find out that what you're doing every day is bad for you. Somebody says, well, I've just gotten out of the habit of taking my daily walk around the block. Well, I guess you'll just have to get in the habit of being sick down the road. Somebody says, well, I used to read the books all the time. I've just gotten out of the habit. Then change it. Just get back into the habit. It's called discipline. You can keep your fingers crossed if you want to and hope that it'll all straighten out to change in your favor. But we call that naive at best. You can't keep doing this any longer. Don't wish for a better wind. The key is to wish for the wisdom to set a better sail. That is the philosophy I picked up at age 25 and it revolutionized my whole life. I found it was easy. I became a millionaire when I was 31. Now here's my definition of easy. It was something I could do. But here's a little parenthesis. I worked hard at it. I made sure my disciplines were in line. I made sure my habits were good. I got up early, stayed up late, and worked hard from age 25 to 31. Well, you say, Mr. Rohn, if it was so easy, how come during those six years, all those other people around you didn't get rich? It's easy not to. That's it. It's easy to keep doing the things that don't work. It's easy not to develop the disciplines. So how come I got rich and they didn't? Here's a philosophical phrase. The things that are easy to do are also easy not to do. That's the difference between success and failure. Here's the key formula for success. A few disciplines practiced every day. What should you spend your time doing? Don't waste your time on things that aren't going to matter. But a few simple disciplines can change your whole economic future. A few simple disciplines. A few simple habits. Repeat it every day. Now here's the formula for failure. Errors in judgment. Repeat it every day. I'm telling you they'll spin out of control in 10 years. A few errors every day. It's disastrous. Now here's why it's easy to repeat an error in judgment. Because failure doesn't fall at the end of the first day. Or the first week or the first month. It's easy to get faked out. If disaster fell on us at the end of the first week, we'd change our philosophy. But it's so subtle. They're so subtle. They get you a little off course. You keep drifting off course and all of a sudden you're caught. So you've got the choice right now of one of two easies, easy to do or easy not to do. I can give you in one sentence how I got rich by the time I was 31. I did not neglect to do the easy things I could do for six years. That's the key. I found something easy I could do that led to fortune and I did not neglect to do it.